This is Online Publications Management, Lesson 10, What Goes in the Heading. This lesson is brought to you by Utah State University's Online Masters in Technical Communication. I'm Dr. David Haley. I'm the instructor of record for this course. The purpose of this video is to give you a bit of an understanding of what appears in the heading of a typical web page. Uh, some of it's designed for uh, the browser, some is designed for web bots. All of it is metadata designed to improve performance of your page. Rather than have you watch me type all of this stuff in, it would be take me longer to type it in than I have in this video, I typed it in already and I will show you thing by thing what the, rel the various elements do. Now before anything happens, at the very top here, there's the doc type public, meaning obviously it's a public document. W3C means WWW Consortium. It's an organization that provides advice for web design. DTD H X HTML means that this is HTML based on XML and it's transitional and it's uses English characters. And so basically all this does is repeat that. If we look at the next line, this is the HTML line. You, where at the top of the page it says HTML, bottom of the page it says HTML. But this adds to it XMLNS equals HTTP uh, and then there's the W3 Consortium again, 1999 protocol, and it's XHTML. And that just tells the browser that this is going to be an XHTML page. This is the head. The head is where a lot of information about the website resides. For example, title, process preservation, a tool for preserving critical skills. This title is longish and and should be. The web bots use these titles for information and will often uh, when you Google something you'll often get this title as your result. The next thing here and I'll separate it out this meta tag here meta name robots content index comma follow what it's doing is telling those web bots, which are really called robots, but everybody calls them web bots or bots or spiders. Uh, it's telling them to index everything they see and follow every link they come across. And so it should be there because it actually tells the spiders how to uh, approach your page in terms of what should it do with the information? Now here we have meta name description. This is a description of what your site does. And here it says process preservation is a specialized heuristic designed to capture critical skills for archiving, quality control, training evidence, and just-in-time training or, or just-in-time training. Yeah, now you'll notice here I have process preservation separated. In the title, I have them together so that if anybody types in either, it improves the odds of this page being indexed. Then we have, this is the style sheet. Uh, this is an internal style sheet, which is to say it's on the same page as the content. Uh, later in this semester, I will move it into its own page, and you can see how that works. But for now, it's best to have it on its own page because it's easier to work with. Okay, body. Now, this isn't the body uh, where the content begins. That's here. This describes what should, be, what should be done with the body. And in this case, I've asked for a background image and the URL uh, for that background image is BG Rust dot jpeg and so the image bgrust.jpg should be there now bgrust.jpg 
is this one. Uh, this is the background for the site. Now, next is banner wrap. And I've created a banner image. And so what we have is background image. The URL is images uh, forward slash banner wrap dot JPEG. Uh, keeping in mind that this is the index page. And so it is a directory above the images directory. So you go from this directory to the images directory and then to banner wrap. And banner wrap looks like this. This is the top of the full page. And what I've done is slice this off that page and saved it and made it available for this website. Now, so this is the banner wrap, and I say the for the banner wrap division, I say float left, which means go all the way to the left of the page, or the left of the space available to you, and the height of this box should be 252 pixels. The width of the box should be 1,200 pixels, which is exactly the size of the image. Okay, left nav wrap. By the way, notice these hashtags here or pound signs. These are what tells the cascading style sheet convention that this is an ID. So this is an ID, this is an ID, this is an ID. Now, part of that convention is we also have classes, and you show a class with a period. But I'll get back up here uh, and get back to left nav wrap. Now, left nav wrap has a background image, and it is BG left nav, and it looks like, well, it's this part here. Anyway, left nav wrap is also floating left, which means it should line up. And I show you with this. Here is the complete page set up. Obviously, it doesn't have its text yet. That banner goes across the top. Left nav is on this side over here. Uh, and the copy section is this part right here. And what I did with the Photoshop image was slice it into three pieces. This is a little confusing, but be because of the way that HTML works, everything happens in line. So this part over here should be up here. The reason it's not is because I put it in the body wrap, and I said the body wrap can go no bigger than this image here. So basically, we get word wrapping. Uh, and it ends up over here, and then this follows it because it's exactly the same size as together. They're exactly the same size as this image at the top. And here's body wrap, and its width is 1,200 pixels, which is exactly what I gave the banner. So the image, the that section can be no larger than 1,200 pixels. The font family is Verdana, Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. So anything in written in the body will be in one of these typefaces, whichever one the browser has as its default typeface. Its position is absolute, which means it's exactly 1,200, I mean exactly 150 pixels from the edge there. And it says here, 150 pixels from the left. Uh, now, all the others floated, but this position is absolute. The top is 10 pixels down. Now, I've had these, I've highlighted these from time to time, these curly braces. What The way the convention works for this is you say first that it's an ID, and then you say what it is, what the division's name is, and then this begins your list of information about that division. 
So this is, these are the rules that division is going to follow. Copy wrap is the same. This says this is a class. The class is copy wrap. It's a cla the class is copy wrap because uh, this could appear on the same page more than once. All of the others can never appear on the same page more than once. You can't have a body wrap. You can't have two body wraps on the page. It's just not possible. And you wouldn't want a le two left nav wraps. Uh, you wouldn't want two banner wraps. And so this is a class. The rest of these are IDs. And the height is defined as 649 pixels. Its width is 741. Its background image, it has a background image too. The font family is Verdana, Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Now we could come up here. And we could say and then what the browser would do is it would either do it in Times New Roman or if it didn't have Times New Roman, it would use its default serif. Oh, by the way, you will want to know about this. The font size is 75M. Okay, the default size of a font for a browser is called its M. And that's the full width that an M would be if it were displayed on this browser. Uh, the full width a default M would be. And so this is three quarters of a default M because default M's are kind of big. Then this also floats wet, left. And so what happens is you end up with this floating left against this line, which is the edge of the body wrap, which is absolute. This is floating left here because it can't, there's nothing can go any further to the right. And then this is floating left against this. And that's basically how you control the position of your uh, sections on your website. Now, you get finished with, we finish here by saying we're closing style, and then we're closing the head. And then we go to body, body wrap, and body wrap is defined with this up here. We go to banner wrap, and it's defined with, or controlled by this banner wrap stuff up here. We go to left nav wrap, and it's controlled by the left nav wrap on top. And then we have copy wrap, and it's controlled by the copy wrap. And then, of course, we go down, we close all our divisions, we close the body, we close the HTML, and that's the full page ready for new content. Now, controlling the content is still going to be uh, a bit of a problem, and it's going to take using even more divisions to create the space for the content. Uh, the banner is fine because it's an image. The left nav has to have buttons, and uh, it's easiest to put visual images as buttons, but to have text, HTML text, as the actual buttons, because the browser, uh, the, the spiders read those links, and it can't read those links if they're images. So it's a good idea to have those links be text and just have your image in the background and have the link look like it's sitting on the image. And then finally, copy wrap is the same way. You put a, another division in to hold your... And basically, that's the... Uh, from top to bottom, that's what goes on a page once it's prepared to start integrating content. 